Okay, you all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, watch, I'll try and do it right now. This is gonna be your speed building for your multi. And so um, words that come out, you have physical therapy, and that's written therp, F long A R P, physical therapy. You have <clears throat> I think is I N G, I think I N G. Is that correct? S T H A R K T. S T H A R K T. Length of time is L F T. I believe it's initial L final F T for length of time. Yes. You have uh, vague and ambiguous is babes, B long A B S, vague and ambiguous. You have thank you, T H A U N G with an asterisk. Thank you. You have Reason is RN, initial R, final N. Help, HEP with an asterisk. Help, you have um, mother, M O E R. Wait a minute, W A M T, wait a minute. Medical records is M O R D Z, M O R D Z. Visit is VIT, V I T. Visit, and then you have, I don't remember, Y-O-R-M, Y-O-R-M. Disability is D long A-B-L-T, disability. The record is T-R-O-R-D, the record T-R-O-R-D. Okay, and so it starts with question in the middle with the transcript by Ms. Nessel. Always miss Nestle's witness unless you have Mr. Hyman speaking to the witness or Ms. Nestle. I am Ms. Nestle. The witness. Mr. Hyman. Ms. Nestle. The witness. Mr. Hyman. And this is going to be you all. We'll start at 120 for five minutes. It starts with Ms. Nestle asking the questions to the witness unless you have Mr. Hyman speaking to either one of us, five minutes. Was it making your ankle hurt more than it did before the physical therapy? Yes, it was hurting, it was hurting. More than it was before the physical therapy? It was still hurting. The question is? Listen to her question, Ms. Mosley. The question is, did the physical therapy cause you more pain than before you had the physical therapy? Did it cause me more pain than? Yes. Did you have more pain after the physical therapy than before you walked in there? That's her question. Yes, I had pain, but it was. Did you have more pain? More pain? I think it was, it was the same. Okay. So the physical therapy wasn't helping. Is that correct? Correct. Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy wasn't helping in that certain length of time? Excuse me? Yes. I'm going to object. The question is somewhat vague and ambiguous. At what point in time are you referring to? Thank you. I needed to clarify that. Between the first visit with Dr. Ang and the second visit with Dr. Ang, did you go to physical therapy? Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy was not helping? Within that time? Right. No. Okay. Is there a reason you didn't tell anybody? Well, I felt that it was going to improve. Who took you to physical therapy? Oh, I can't think of his name. How did you get there? How did you get to All Care? You mean who took me there? Yes. How did you get there? I thought you meant who. It was there. It was there. Oh, how did I get up there? Right. My neighbor and my mother. 
And after the physical therapy, you saw Dr. Ang a third time. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. And did Dr. Ang look at your ankle? He just looked. He looked at your ankle? Oh, yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Was this about the end of January, about January 22nd? Oh, wait a minute. This is, you're talking about within the January? Yes. I think the medical records can give you the exact dates and how many times she saw Dr. Aang through the third treatment. No, I don't remember in the January, no. By this third visit with Dr. Aang, did you have swelling still? Yes. Still had swelling? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? When I was having this, me having my whirlpool therapy. By the time you saw Dr. Ang the third time, you're saying that you still had swelling. Is that correct? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? I don't remember. I believe so. I believe so, but it was... That's fine. If you don't remember, you don't remember. Oh, okay. The medical records speak volumes in this case. What did Dr. Ang do for you, if anything, during the third visit? Okay, I'm going to object as too vague because the record is clear that Dr. Ang... Okay, I don't need to look. That Ms. Mrs. Mosley saw Dr. Ang on a couple of occasions regarding this disability. Okay, you all. And so um, let me give you some more words that come out. You have mm, pretty basic. You have, excuse me, is KPUM? KPUM. You have object, OBT, object. You have um, I felt I F L T I F L T I believe so is I B L S I B L S neighbor is nabe and long a B neighbor you have um, Exact, K-P-A-K-T, K-P-A-K-T. And then you have swelling. Remember, you have to come back with the G. If you put it in, it doesn't come out. So it's S-W-E-L, come back G. Whirlpool is whirl and then pool, and it's one word in English. You have volume, volume, B-O-L, Y long U-M. And then you have, if anything, F and G. No, you can't write if anything. Uh, you have occasion is O and then occasion. O by itself, occasion. And this will be at 1.30, you all. Starts with myself, Ms. Nessel, asking the witness questions. Was it making your ankle hurt more than it did before the physical therapy? Yes, it was hurting. It was hurting. More than it was before the physical therapy? It was still hurting. The question is... Listen to her question, Ms. Mosley. The question is, did the physical therapy cause you more pain than before you had the physical therapy? Did it cause me more pain than... Yes. Did you have more pain after the physical therapy than before you walked in there? That's her question. Yes, I had pain, but it was... But did you have more pain? More pain? I think it was... It was the same. Okay. So, the physical therapy wasn't helping. Is that correct? Correct. Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy wasn't helping and that... 
certain length of time. Excuse me? Yes. I'm going to object. The question is somewhat vague and ambiguous. At what point in time are you referring to? Thank you. I needed to clarify that. Between the first visit with Dr. Eng and the second visit with Dr. Eng, did you go to physical therapy? Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy was not helping? Within that time? Right. No. Okay. Is there a reason you didn't tell anybody? Well, I felt that it was going to improve. Who took you to physical therapy? Oh, I can't think of his name. How did you get there? How did you get to all care? You mean who took me there? Yes. How did you get there? I thought you meant who. It was there. It was there. Oh, how did I get up there? Right. My neighbor and my mother. And after the physical therapy, you saw Dr. Ang a third time. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. And did Dr. Ang look at your ankle? He just looked. He looked at your ankle? Oh, yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Was this about the end of January? About January 22nd. Oh, wait a minute. This is... You're talking about within the January? Yes. I think the medical records can give you the exact dates on how many times she saw Dr. Ang through the third treatment. No, I don't remember in the January, no. By this third visit with Dr. Ang, did you have swelling still? Yes. Still had swelling? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? When I was having this, me having my whirlpool therapy? By the time you saw Dr. Ang the third time, you're saying that you still had swelling. Is that correct? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? I don't remember. I believe so. I believe so, but it was... That's fine. If you don't remember, you don't remember. Oh, okay. The medical records speak volumes in this case. What did Dr. Eng do for you, if anything, during this third visit? Okay, I'm going to object as too vague because the record is clear that Dr. Eng... I don't need to look. ...that Mrs. Mosley saw Dr. Eng on a couple of occasions regarding this disability. Okay, you all some words. Regard, R-A-R-D, regard. And then you have... Uh, how many times? H-O-U-M-T-S. How many times? You have yeah. Y-A-E with an asterisk. Yeah. And then you have more than is initial M, final R-N. Initial M, final R-N. I can't think. Y-A-N-G, for I can't think, Y-A-N-G, okay? And this will be at 140, you all. Oh, ankle. Did it come out? Let me see, ankle, A-N-G, with an asterisk, come back L. A-N-G with an asterisk, and then come back final L. And this is 140. Was it making your ankle hurt more than it did before the physical therapy? Yes, it was hurting. It was hurting. More than it was before the physical therapy? It was still hurting. The question is... Listen to her question, Ms. Mosley. The question is, did the physical therapy cause you more pain than before you had the physical therapy? Did it cause me more pain than... Yes. Did you have more pain after the physical therapy than before you walked in there? That's her question. Yes, I had pain, but it was... But did you have more pain? More pain? I think it was, it was the same. Okay. So, the physical therapy wasn't helping, is that correct? Correct. Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy wasn't helping in that... Certain length of time. 
certain length of time. Yes. I'm going to object. The question is somewhat vague and ambiguous. At what point in time are you referring to? Thank you. I needed to clarify that. Between the first visit with Dr. Eng and the second visit with Dr. Eng, did you go to physical therapy? Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy was not helping? Within that time? Right. No. Okay. Is there a reason you didn't tell anybody? Well, I felt that it was going to improve. Who took you to physical therapy? Oh, I can't think of his name. How did you get there? How did you get to all care? You mean who took me there? Yes. How did you get there? I thought you meant who. It was there. It was there. Oh, how did I get up there? Right. My neighbor and my mother. And after the physical therapy, you saw Dr. Ang a third time. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. And did Dr. Ang look at your ankle? He just looked. He looked at your ankle? Oh, yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Was this about the end of January, about January 22nd? Oh, wait a minute. This is, you're talking about within the January? Yes. I think the medical records can give you the exact dates and how many times she saw Dr. Ang through the third treatment. No, I don't remember in the January. No. By this third visit with Dr. Ang, did you have swelling still? Yes. Still had swelling? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? When I was having this, me having my whirlpool therapy? By the time you saw Dr. Ang the third time, you're saying that you still had swelling, is that correct? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? I don't remember. I believe so. I believe so, but it was... That's fine. If you don't remember, you don't remember. Oh, okay. The medical records speak volumes in this case. What did Dr. Ang do for you, if anything, during this third visit? Okay, I'm going to object as to vague because the record is clear that Dr. Ang... I don't need to look. ...that Mrs. Mosley saw Dr. Ang on a couple of occasions regarding this disability. Okay, and so some words, listen is just L, final N, and then you have toes. T-O-E, come back, final S, toes, you have, um, is that correct, S-T-H-A-R-K-T, is that correct, S-T-H-A-R-K-T, you have, um, Therapy by itself is just therp. T H long A R P therp. Um, okay, that's all I see you all. And then this will be at one fifty. Okay, one fifty. Was it getting? or making your ankle hurt more than it did before the physical therapy. Yes, it was hurting. It was hurting. More than it was before the physical therapy? It was still hurting. The question is... Listen to her question, Miss Mosley. The question is, did the physical therapy cause you more pain than before you had the physical therapy? Did it cause me more pain than... Yes. Did you have more pain after the physical therapy than before you walked in there? That's her question. Yes, I had pain, but it was... But did you have more pain? More pain? I think it was, it was the same. Okay. So the physical therapy wasn't helping, is that correct? Correct. Did you tell anybody that the physical therapy wasn't helping in that... Certain length of time. Excuse me? Yes. I'm going to object... The question is somewhat vague and ambiguous. At what point in time are you referring to? Thank you. I needed to clarify that. Between the first visit with Dr. Ang and the second visit with Dr. Ang, did you go to physical therapy? 
did you tell anybody that the physical therapy was not helping? Within that time? Right. No. Okay. Is there a reason you didn't tell anybody? Well, I felt that it was going to improve. Who took you to physical therapy? Oh, I can't remember his name. How did you get there? How did you get to all care? You mean who took me there? Yes. How did you get there? I thought you meant who. It was there. It was there. Right. Oh, how did I get up there? Right. My neighbor and my mother. And after the physical therapy, you saw Dr. Ang a third time. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. And did Dr. Ang look at your ankle? He just looked. He looked at your ankle. Oh, yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Was this about the end of January, about January 22nd? Oh, wait a minute. This is, you're talking about within the January? Yes. I think the medical records can give you the exact dates and how many times she saw Dr. Ang through the third treatment. No, I don't remember in the January, no. By this third visit with Dr. Ang, did you have swelling still? Yes. Still had swelling? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? When I was having this, me having my whirlpool therapy? By the time you saw Dr. Ang the third time, you're saying that you still had swelling. Is that correct? Yes. Were you able to move your toes? I don't remember. I believe so. I believe so, but it was... That's fine. If you don't remember, you don't remember. Oh, okay. The medical records speak volumes in this case. What did Dr. Ang do for you, if anything, during this third visit? Okay, I'm going to object as to vague because the record is clear that Dr. Ang... I don't need to look. ...that Mrs. Mosley saw Dr. Ang on a couple of occasions regarding this disability. Okay, you also let me give you um, a couple of words you have. Um, I think I gave it to you. Uh, mother, M O E R, mother, M O E R. And then you've got. Mm, I think that's it, you all. Everything's pretty basic. So what we'll do now is we'll get ready for your tests, okay? We'll get ready for your tests. And I'll just get this. But this is separate file, you know? Put that separate. I do break them up like I do. So we'll get ready for your test now. On your 140 multi-test number one, proper names, you have Earl S. Jankow, Penny, Mr. Glugston, Allstate, Horace Mann Company, Paulson, Ralph, Plaintiff's Deposition Exhibit B, X, P, Mr. Finnerty, P2, D, and one. And it starts with examination, by Mr. Finnerty and always Mr. Finnerty's witness, unless you have Mr. Glugston speaking to either one, the witness or myself. I am Mr. Finnerty. The witness. Mr. Glugston. Mr. Finnerty. The witness. Mr. Glugston. And this will be you all test number one, 140 multi. Starts with examination by Mr. Finnerty for five minutes, you all, the very beginning. Would you state your name for the record? My name is Earl S. Jankow. What is your age, Mr. Jankow? I am 21. Are you married? Yes, I am. What is your wife's name? Penny. I would like counsel to understand that since we have established Mr. Jankow's background at the previous deposition, we should proceed with this deposition. Mr. Jankow, if I may direct your attention to the accident that took place on April 18, 1984, please continue with what happened. 
When I entered the intersection, I came to a complete stop. I proceeded with my turn when struck in the right rear quarter panel of my car by a motorcycle. You were in your turn by that time? Right. Would that be 15 seconds until the accident happened? I guess. Mr. Jane Cow, unless you have timed that, don't guess at it. If you look at your watch and see how long 15 seconds takes, you might want to. Did you ever time it? No, I never did. How long after the light changed would you estimate the seconds were that? If you know. I'm asking him to estimate. If he knows. If he can estimate, that is not the same as a guess. If you know, answer the question. I can't really even guess at that. All right. Tell us briefly what you did after the accident happened. I jumped out of the car and ran to the bike, which was on fire. I took hold of the driver and took him out from under the bike. And there were some other persons there, one with a coat and one with a blanket, and the flames were extinguished on his clothes. What did you do after that? After that, I was pretty shook up about it. I just walked around the scene of the accident. All right. Did you or do you have a private attorney other than Mr. Glugston? I don't see where this is material to what we are discussing at this point. Mr. Glugston, I am simply trying to get everything that's pertinent in this case out in the open. Do you know what the policy limits are on your insurance with all states? Yes, I do. What are they? I have advised you so that you know on the record that Horace Mann Company has the policy on the car Mr. Jankow was driving. It is 100,000 and 300,000 liability. 100,000 per person and 300 per accident. You wouldn't have a copy of the Allstate policy with you, would you? No, I wouldn't. Would you have any objection to providing me with a copy of that. I will make the request through your attorney. Make it through Ralph Paulson, Ralph the attorney representing Allstate. But has he entered an appearance? No, he will not enter an appearance. I will probably make it through you the request. Make it through Mr. Jankow and I will present it to Mr. Paulson. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you, counsel. Mr. Jankow, I hand you what has been marked Plaintiff's Deposition Exhibit B. Does that have a sketch of the intersection? Yes, it does. It should be made clear for the record that this is not to scale. Good enough. The circles indicate stoplights. The circles on that exhibit indicate stoplights, did you say? Yes, the circles indicate stoplights. Would you draw your vehicle in there at the point of impact? That is the point of impact. You have got an X in there too. You had better put something else in there, a P or something. All right. Okay, make this P too. Okay. That is not going to show very well. Would counsel permit me to mark over each of those with letters? Sure, with the black you may. The record can show that Mr. Finnerty is writing over the P and the P2, so it is clear. P2 is north of P. Yes, I will also go over the D. Yes, that's okay. And this is a 1, and this is X. Okay, you all, and we have your second test. Multi number 2140, Mrs. Prince, Dwight Price, Jeans, Elm Street in Tacoma, 22, Chevrolet, Green Tree, Tacoma, Remington, Mrs. Price, and Jason. And it does start with the court in colloquy speaking to Mr. Phillips, and then you have direct examination by Mr. Phillips, okay? Always Mr. Phillips' witness. I am Mr. Phillips. 
The witness, the court. Mr. Phillips. The witness, the court. And remember all of the banks you can use for the court. And when you're speaking to the witness, you can use W Answer Bank for the witness, okay? 140 Multi, number two, starts with the court for five minutes, you all. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Price, what did you do after you and your husband, Dwight Price, arrived at Jean's house on Elm Street in Tacoma? We went inside to talk to Jean, and we had coffee. And my husband asked me to go out to the car and bring in the 22 rifle because he wanted to show it to Jean. And did you go to your vehicle, the Chevrolet, and remove the 22 rifle? Yes, I did. Where was the 22 rifle kept when you removed it from the vehicle? In the, in the trunk of my car. Was the shotgun also in the trunk? Yes but you took only the 22 out. Yes, I did. And did you then take the 22 into Jean's apartment? Yes, I did. Now, after the 22 rifle had been taken into Jean's apartment, sometime later, did you leave the apartment? Yes, I did. What did you do? We went home. Where is home? 1802 Green Tree, Tacoma. Before leaving, did you go out to the car? Yes. I went out to the car with the rifle, and on the way out, these two guys asked me where I was going with the gun. These two guys that asked you where you were going with the gun, had you seen either one of these two persons before this time? No, I hadn't. What race were these two guys? One was black and one was white. Did they both appear to be the same height? No. One was taller than the other? Well, yes, obviously. Do you know which one it was, either the tall one or the short one, that asked you about the gun that you were carrying? No, because I wasn't paying that much attention. Try to recall, Mrs. Price, which one it was. I don't recall. Did you say anything to either one of these two men after they asked to see your gun? Yes. After I got to the back end of my car, I told them I was putting the rifle in my trunk. Were they standing anywhere near you when you told them that? Yes, about three feet away. Did you then put the rifle in your trunk, the trunk of your Chevrolet? Yes, I did. What did these two men do after that then, if you know? They didn't do anything. Well, they went back up there. Beg your pardon? Please repeat that. They went back up towards the lady's apartment door, next door to Jean. They went back to a doorway that was next to the apartment that you had been visiting in? Yes. Did they enter the apartment or stand outside or where? No, they stood outside. After you put the 22 rifle into the trunk of the vehicle, what happened next? I got into the car. Did you see your husband then? Pardon me? Did you see your husband then? Yes, he was also in the car. He was in the back showing Jean the other gun. So... Jean came out of the apartment at some time, and your husband came out of the apartment later. Yes. And then you indicate that your husband was showing a gun to Jean? Uh-huh. Do you know which one? It was the, the shotgun, the Remington. So your husband removed the shotgun from the trunk then and showed it to Jean? Yes, he did. Do you know where these two men that you had previously seen were at the time that your husband, Mr. Dwight Price, was showing the shotgun to Jean? Yes, they were chasing some little boy with a wagon. They were in the immediate vicinity? Yes. Eventually, did your husband put that shotgun back in the trunk of the vehicle? Yes, he did. And did he get into the car with you? 
Yes, he did. Now, Mrs. Price, who was driving the vehicle, you or your husband? I was. And did he eventually, did your son, Jason, get in the car? Yes, he did. And where was Jason in the vehicle? In the back seat. On this occasion when? Okay, and we'll get ready for your 120s. 120 number one, multi-voice. You have Mr. Scott, Mr. Brown, Mr. Roberts, Gus Garcia, Detective Cole, and Mr. Jones. And it starts at the very beginning with cross-examination by Ms. Fisher. Always Ms. Fisher's witness. I am Ms. Fisher. The witness. The court. Ms. Fisher. The witness. The court. Remember the court, all of the banks, and then you have witness W answer bank, okay? Cross-examination is the title by Ms. Fisher, 120 multi number one for five minutes. Mr. Scott, when you interviewed these witnesses, did you determine whether there were any defenses that applied to their cases? Of course I tried to determine that. Did you, upon doing this investigation, did you determine that there were any inconsistent defenses such as would compromise Mr. Brown's case? None that I can recall. And did you fully advise Mr. Brown as to what to expect as far as a 10-year sentence? Yes, ma'am. Did you determine whether Mr. Brown was pleading guilty voluntarily and knowingly? Yes. Could your actions in this case as far as the defenses and your advice to the clients be considered trial strategy? I suppose it could, yes. Did you see any dilemmas regarding your loyalty to one or the other of the defendants? No, ma'am. Did you encourage this defendant to accept and to go ahead and plead guilty because you were not or could not get prepared for trial? No. Did you perceive any actual conflicts within the cases or the defenses that would have adversely affected your representation? I didn't see any. Did you encourage this defendant to take any action, whether it was the plea of guilty or whether or not to pursue shock to his detriment because it might have favored another defendant? No. And did you fully discuss the consequences of the plea with this client? Yes. Afterwards, after the plea, did you discuss the consequences of going federal with him? Yes, I did. Did you vigorously and individually represent this defendant? I thought I did. Was the decision or his decision to plead guilty was this a last minute thing as far as the 10 years time? Was that recommendation a last minute thing? It wasn't a last minute thing. I think there was a lot of soul searching and discussions going on about what was going to happen. The final resolution of this case, what the right thing to do was. We were looking at a lot of time in this case. It was a very serious case. I have no further questions, Your Honor. I have one. This may be the best person to answer it, and I wanted to get an answer before we release Mr. Scott. Mr. Roberts was suggesting in earlier on direct examination couldn't you have proffered to the DA a different depiction, contrasting depiction of these four co-defendants? The levels of alleged involvement by the police are already part of the record, but there was some comment about no prior convictions. He's got a clean record. From my reading of the record, did anybody have any prior convictions of the four? I think they were all probation eligible, you know. My recollection from the record was nobody had any prior convictions, but I wasn't sure. 
Well, I don't think anybody had a felony conviction, so everybody was eligible for probation. And we were doing our best in that law firm to get these guys probation. But Gus Garcia had a strong case. He had Detective Cole, and he had more than 300 pounds of marijuana sitting in their lap, and there just wasn't a whole lot we could do. There was a, there are some specific allegations in the application, the sworn application in this case that I wanted to ask you about individually. Mr. Brown has alleged that during the early interviews on this case with Mr. Jones, now I know Mr. Jones is not here and you can't speak to what conversations took place between Mr. Jones and Mr. Brown, but he has alleged in, okay, and so we have your second multi 120, you have chronode, Juarez, Rainbow, Iglesia Emanuel, number seven, and Christian. So it starts in the middle with question by Ms. Sanchez. Always Ms. Sanchez is witness unless you have the court speaking to the witness or Ms. Sanchez. I am Ms. Sanchez. The witness. The court. Ms. Sanchez. The witness. The court. And 120 number two multi-test for five minutes starts with Ms. Sanchez asking the witness questions, unless the court speaks to either one of them again. So all of the banks and then W answer bank. So at the first meeting, it was a detention meeting. Correct. She was asked to provide proof of age and. Correct. And then for the meeting on the predisposition report, did you, how did you arrange for her to be here? Did you call her and tell her to be here or? Correct. How did you ask her to be here? She was informed to be here on a certain date through the phone. Through the phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And at that time, did you tell the mother to provide to you any evidence to bring with her any other documents that would prove that he was either going to school, involved in other activities, report cards, anything like that. I asked her to bring anything that had to do with the child's education or anything that we could possibly use at that time. Okay, and at the second meeting, what did she provide to you? I'm not sure what she provided to me at that time. That's because that's not noted in your file? No, I do not have that information. Well, who would have that information? I would have to bring that information in. It's chronoed on my calendar. So, are you saying she didn't bring you anything? No, that's not what I'm saying. Where is that record? I'm sorry, Your Honor? Where is that record? I usually just write it on a calendar when they're coming in to be. So why isn't it in the chrono chronologicals in the file? I didn't print that out, Your Honor. Where is it then? That's what I'm asking you. I'm not sure, Your Honor. You don't know where your records are? Regarding her coming to visit at that. You said that you don't have the records with you. What was? No, I don't have the information as to when she came to see me for the predisposition report. I just wrote the appointment on my calendar, Your Honor. I did talk to her on the phone. So you didn't make a chronological note? That I called her on the phone? That you met with her on whatever day? I don't believe I did, Your Honor. You did? 
I don't believe I did, Your Honor. I'll move on, Judge. All right. Since she doesn't have that information. Did the mother not tell you that the juvenile was involved in boxing at a gym in Juarez? I don't believe she did. And she did not tell you that he was also on a football team, soccer team, called Rainbow. I believe she did report something to the fact that he played some sort of sport, but she wasn't clear as to which kind of sport it was that he played. And did she not report to you that he not that since he was a young kid, he has belonged to Iglesia Emmanuel number no. seven, which is a Christian church, and that he's always been in this youth group there at this church? No, she did not report that to this officer. Is it possible that she reported that to you and you just did not know it in your file? No, ma'am. Do you have any notations regarding that conversation? Yes, ma'am. I have my written notes. You do. Can I see those notes? I'm sorry. I left them in my office. They were just written notes for the predisposition report. Is that not part of the file on record? I believe it would be. Okay. And you were supposed to bring the file with you. Okay, you all. That concludes your multi-tests. Have a great day, you all. Type one up and see how you're doing, okay? Okay.